weight loss? Um, am I okay? Do I have an eating disorder? If I'm back with my daughter's father. <laughs> So the answer is no. No to the sperm donor, no to a Scott Disick, Courtney Kardashian situation. Will I be moving? I'm surprised a lot of people ask me this. I'd rather than make the there. I'm sorry, mom. Our co-parenting is going as well as I portray it to see. Letting go of the, the pain of not being able to experience pregnancy and birth and seeing my daughter with a sibling. Hello everybody, happy Monday. It's been about four months since I've done my last Q&A and so I thought we would do an unfiltered, most commonly asked questions Q&A. We're just gonna, we're just gonna dive in. I'm a little nervous because some of these questions are unfiltered. So I took the most frequent questions and then kind of like put them in to like one concise question because there were a lot of repeats and I wanted to pick the most popular and what I was just saying kind of leads me into the number one question I was getting is if I'm back with my daughter's father. <laughs> there were so many of that and to that I say we have been divorced for, uh, separated for almost two years. The actual legal divorce process, at least in California, is a very long process. I think we officially we're divorced October 21st, but we have not been together for practically two years. And through that time, we have built up our co-parenting relationship and we are not back together. Divorce is not a light choice at all. And we, you know, are definitely still the people that we were that did not work in a marriage, but work in co-parenting. And just because I like to share healthy co-parenting moments or us getting along does not mean I'm trying to get back together with him. He is in a new relationship. He is happy and I'm so happy that he is happy because that's what you really want for a partner when you are separated and you divorced and raising a child is you want the other parent to be happy. Whether that's a relationship, whether that's having time to take care of themselves, having time to be with their child, like all of this makes complete parent and I want him to be happy in every aspect. So I will continue to be posting healthy co-parenting, you know, content when it applies naturally and it's not like a way of me like being like, Oh, look at us, we're back together. That's, that is not the case. Number two, I actually got a version of this question a lot. What am I tired being asked about? What comments are not my favorite? And I would say anything that is in regards to I wish you and, you know, your daughter's father would be back together. I wish, like, I love seeing you guys back together. And the why did you divorce? Like, the, the, as if there's like, you know, good gossip or healthy information that would help guide someone else through their divorce. And so, you know, these are questions that I, 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 I don't like getting. One saying you like how a couple was six years ago together isn't healthy for, you know, our new dynamic. And it's not healthy for like my future relationships and his current relationship. And yeah, I, I just want people to see that healthy co-parenting and two parents getting along is, you know, just as great as if they had like a romantic relationship. That didn't work for us. This does work for us. Three, a lot of people wanted to know about co-parenting tips and how it's going and if our co-parenting is going as well as I portray it to seem and truly yes I will say did it start off that way no it is a journey that two people need to navigate together and it takes time it's not something that you know it just boom all of a sudden if I was to give any advice to anyone going through that process because a lot of people wanted my personal advice is just to as quickly as you can remove yourself from like the idea of the past romantic relationship 
and put on your parent hat and see this person as like a team player, a person that you want to thrive and this person should want to see you thrive, whether it's like your mental health, your physical health, your you know future romantic endeavors, your dreams, your hobbies, your passions. Like, Both parties should want the best for each other because in doing so it allows each person to be the best parent they can be and that is the end goal with co-parenting. You always want to focus on what is best for your child and co-parenting isn't always going to seem fair. Someone's always going to have more time and that can always affect someone. It will always seem like someone is doing, you know, too much or, you know, giving too much and then that can, you know, you can be resentful, but you really should, you know, always focus that it's not fair. It's not about the parents. It's about the child. And so once you can really focus on that and it really takes, you know, both parties really giving it their all and so if you feel like you're doing everything in your power to have a healthy co-parenting relationship and you're not there yet do not blame yourself it really takes both team members to align and it does take time so just you know trust the process the journey I promise you can get there. Number four, will I be moving? I'm surprised a lot of people ask me this because I've never mentioned anything about it but I have been contemplating leaving one of the most expensive parts of LA where there's really great school systems, but it's the most expensive place in LA. I can only have an apartment here, which is great, but it would be, you know, the dream to have a yard. And thusly, the schools are very expensive over here. And so I have been thinking about once my lease is up here, even though I spent so much time decorating this apartment, making a home in a house where it's cheaper and the schools are cheaper and I can have a yard for my dog and my daughter but I mean that would be my daughter moving every year of her life and so that is something I want to contemplate but if I do it now then I can get her in a preschool and keep her within you know the same system with the same kids rather than staying here starting preschool here and then moving the following year so I am contemplating it I don't know if it's gonna happen but there would be a lot of upsides with the house also downsides as a single mom having a house does scare me a little bit just safety wise so I definitely would need like a really good security system number five there were a lot of variations of this question but would I get a sperm donor to have another child some people were like are you gonna do like a Kourtney Kardashian Scott this sick thing and use <laughs> his sperm to uh, make a baby. So like my daughter's father's sperm to make another baby even though we are not together. And uh, that, that's definitely not happening for multitudes of reasons. Cody is definitely one and done. <laughs> and I just feel like that would really complicate the situation uh, for so many ways. I was super dead set on the fact that I wanted a sibling for my daughter but as she's getting older I'm seeing that there are, are beautiful things to having just you know a single child and that bond and I I'm I'm kind of letting go of the pressure I've been putting on myself to have another child and letting go of the the pain of not being able to experience pregnancy and birth and seeing my daughter with a sibling and I'm very hopeful that even if that doesn't happen, which I'm guessing it probably won't anymore, that I will have just a beautiful experience, a different journey and a really great relationship with my daughter and it's been a really big thing for me to come to and process. Of course I never know what life has to offer but releasing that stress has been really really good for me and seeing that all journeys are beautiful and if I'm one and done I have the best daughter in the world so I I can't complain. So the answer is no. No to the sperm donor, no to a Scott Disick, Courtney Kardashian situation. Number six, a lot of people want to know about my love life. How's it going post you know, my not so great relationship. I think it's been about six, seven months since my last relationship 
And with kind of what I was saying in my last answer of, you know, letting go of the pressure of like having a family and having a sibling and going through pregnancy again, I've also kind of let go of finding a new relationship. I feel like now I really want to focus on my daughter. I'm not closed off to the idea of finding someone, but I am not actively looking at all. I'm, you know, taking my time to not date, taking the time to be with my daughter, be with myself. I would say in my last bad relationship, I definitely have a lot of regret. Not that I spent any time with him and took that time away from my daughter. I was very sure that I never had that happen, but I definitely lost a lot of time for myself and a lot of love for myself that I could have been, you know, focusing on me and focusing it on a partner that, you know, really didn't have my best interests in mind whatsoever. And I I am fearful of getting into another relationship and it not being right and giving that love and attention to somebody else when I deserve that love and attention right now. And so I have no pressure on dating. I I, I, I don't know if I would say I'm, I'm scarred from it, but it brought just new things light for me that single life ain't so bad. Number seven, travel plans. So I have never really traveled with my daughter. I We did do a camping trip when she was three months old and she actually went on a plane from Colorado to LA when she was three months old. But by myself, like I've never taken her out of state, out of the country. That is something I would like to do. And I think for us and our sleep journey, the fact that she's an independent sleeper, I want to wait until she's at the age that she can like safely and comfortably sleep with me because right now if I try to get her to sleep with me she doesn't connect being with me with a time to sleep she connects independent time with sleep time and I just can only imagine what it would be like to be in a hotel room and just not being able to get her to sleep like I just feel like she would be up for days I know probably at some point she would pass out but I I, yeah, that, that is the issue with creating an independent sleeper is I, I kind of ruined that that for us being able to share a hotel room. And I could bring the slumber pot and the pack and play I use at my mom's house, but once again, traveling singular with a toddler with that much stuff overwhelms me. So I, I would rather not go that route unless I went with like my family. I will be doing a bachelorette trip in I believe February to Tulum. So that's not with my daughter. I am very excited about that. I've never been to Tulum and it's really my first vacation since becoming a mom. A lot of questions about potty training. How is it going? And it <laughs> has not started yet. Uh, I was definitely waiting for her to show some of like the basic cues they tell you to look for, you know, they really tell you to not, you know, put pressure or push your child into this if they are not showing the signs of readiness. And she's starting to show some signs of readiness. She just started like alerting me of when a diaper needs to be changed. And so I'm picking up on these things that she's showing she is ready. But our personal issue is my daughter is scared of the bathroom. So I got, I was gonna do the journey of the little toilet seat insert on the toilet with a step stool, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have to now get her one of those standalone potties and try to teach her outside of the bathroom. And the reason she's scared of the bathroom is she's hates the bath and so she thinks if she's going to the bathroom she's getting a bath and I, I've, I've been working through this it's been three months now of her hating the bath and I cannot figure out why it slowly evolved on like under my watch I saw it happen over time when I tell you there was nothing substantial that happened nothing's like she didn't slip she didn't fall the water wasn't too hot she didn't get soap in her eyes like it was just you know, she wanted to spend less and less time in the bath and now 
very anti-bathroom. I have tried bath crayons, uh, toddler bath bombs, light up ice cubes, bath toys, like water sprayers, anything you could possibly think of I've tried and she still <laughs> hates the bathroom, which has really delayed our potty training process. I am think I'm gonna hold strong though to the fact that when I go to my family's house for Christmas for about two weeks, I'm going to have them help me do the potty training process. Also just because I know she's gonna make accidents and I feel like I'd rather them make the there. I'm sorry, mom and Lars. But I also, it's such like a big process. Like you have to stay home, you know, diaper free, accidents are gonna happen. Mom needs help. This last question, I save for last because I want to do like a trigger warning. I know talking about weight and eating disorders is a very, very sensitive subject, but I have been receiving a lot of questions, not just in the question box when I asked you guys what you wanted me to talk about, but just DMs, comments, uh, yeah, even my dentist. <laughs> Commenting about my weight loss, um, am I okay? Do I have an eating disorder? And I, 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 I want to make a, a bigger video talking about all of this, so I'm just gonna keep this like short and light. Obviously, I know I have had a weight loss and I know I am too thin. I have gained weight since the peak of my weight loss, which was this time last year. I've actually gained 10 pounds since then and I, I did study psychology in college and we, and nutrition, health and nutrition, and of course on both aspects we talked about eating disorders and I know a lot of people struggle with it. I know people in my own life that struggle with different versions of binging and purging and restricting and dieting and all of this stuff. And so I know the key components that you know, are an eating disorder, you know, uh, uh, obsessive thoughts or you feel a loss of control in your life and so you control what you consume, uh, body dysmorphia, not being able to really see your body for how it is, obsessing about calories, restricting food, binging and, and, and purging, and I personally don't fit in any of these categories and, and I don't want to say like I have an eating disorder when I don't know if I fit within that box, but I also don't know if I don't not fit into that box. I feel like it's it's a it's a very big thing to say that you have and you're you are and I don't I feel like struggle with a lot of the things that people who, you know, have eating disorders and you know use that label have and so I don't want to be disrespectful and use that label but for me I, I would say there was a lot of different things that led to my weight loss and the one thing that I feel like could be considered an eating disorder is that I was in so many places at once taking care of so many different things and the last thing on my mind was like putting myself and my health as a priority. And there would be a lot of times that I would make dinner and then I would, you know, try to sit and eat dinner and dinner would get thrown on the ground and then I would try to clean it so my dog didn't get it. And then all of a sudden, you know, my toddler was out trying to jump off the couch and then I'm trying to clean up dinner and then I'm just trying to like pick and eat whatever I can and not really focusing intentionally on making sure I'm eating as much as I should, but I was never intentionally like dieting or restricting calories. I don't limit myself to like any category of food. Weight loss was never my goal. I can obviously see that I am too thin and it's, you know, isn't healthy. And I, you know, thought something was wrong with my thyroid, which I'm still trying to figure out. So not taking the time and love and energy into making sure I am prioritizing feeling my body in the best way possible. Is that a disorder of eating? I don't know if it classifies as that, but I definitely don't fall under like the regular, I feel like patterns of what I've learned to be an eating disorder. It was really just me not putting myself first, but I'm definitely not like not 
eating. But like I said in the beginning, I feel like there were a lot of factors along like the past two years that led to my weight loss and just like my body in general. And I know I was doing like a lot of body updates and the only reason I stopped doing that, you know, through my postpartum journey is I saw that my weight loss was could be triggering to people and that was the last thing I wanted it to be and so I decided to like stop doing body updates not that I was trying to hide anything but I yeah I, I didn't feel good posting about you know what the journey of my body when it wasn't in a healthy state and that it could trigger people with eating disorders if you're curious i will dive deeper into kind of the whole story and all the different factors and and my thoughts and stuff and you know how i'm moving forward but the the next year i am really 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 focusing on prioritizing me really carving out intentional time to fuel my body and just be healthy because I, I'm raising a daughter and I know men and women can both suffer from eating disorders, but she is going to look to me and how I take care of myself as to how she should take care of herself in the future. And so I definitely want to showcase health to her I definitely feel like I could do a better job of that and so that is my goal for 2023 I definitely want to gain weight gain muscle start working out not to lose weight but just to feel stronger and powerful I did stop working out this year completely I haven't not worked out since December because I was trying to gain weight I feel like I'm rambling but I, I just I know this is a very sensitive and triggering subject for a lot of people but I will say in regards to anybody whether they're struggling with an eating disorder or not it's not the best course of action to make comments on people's weight rather even if you see someone losing weight and saying oh they look so much better you don't know if they're struggling with an eating disorder and this will trigger them to dive deeper into it if you know you question if someone does have one and they're struggling with health conditions or other things then you know this can really trigger negative thoughts within them I would just say in regards to me or anyone else in general it's never a good idea to comment on people's weight you never know what the full story is of course if you have like a close friend or family member and you come to them and say hey if you ever want to talk about this or if you're struggling with anything I'm here I feel like that's okay but you know just just be careful what you say on the internet you never know what anyone is going through that's just my two cents and everything i hope that you enjoyed this video a little unfiltered raw subjects q a let me know if you have any questions down below and what you would like to see next on my channel if you have not already liked this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up it helps out my channel so so much thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next monday Bye!